at the risk of repeating myself, 1,100 miles, 110,000 feet of elevation over 31 days. In today's show, it is time to meet the second of these two inspirational men. Hello and welcome to the Ultra Running Podcast with me, Coach Marshy. So today we have got Grant Chapman on the show. So Grant is the other guy that ran the Land's End to John O'Groats. And we met Liam in episode six. So welcome to the show, Grant. Cheers. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Great having you on the show. Um, and it was great to hear from Liam. So we're going to dive into it with you and find out your your version of events and, and how it went for you and how you felt throughout the run. But before we do that, just tell us a little bit about yourself. Who are you? What do you do in your day job? What's your involvement in running? So I work um, work at school. Uh, I'm a PE teacher as well as working with children with um, social, emotional and uh, behavioural disorders. So um, very involved with fitness and things like that with the kids. Um and then I do some of the coaching for Royston Runners. Um, I especially enjoy doing the Couch to 5K stuff. Um, yeah, that's, that's probably my favourite part. But then, yeah, help out with some of the coaching. Do a little bit of coaching and personal training on the side as well. So, yeah, very, very involved with sort of fitness and, uh, and coaching, that kind of stuff. Excellent. So we, we've we've probably got a lot of common in terms of our roles within our, our running clubs. Um, but before we dive into anything else, and I'm just going to pick you up on that couch to 5k comment you made there. Um, what, what is it that gives you that enjoyment about that that type of coaching? Running's just fantastic in that I think anyone can have a go. Um, and unlike a lot of sports, I think it can be your kind of running, your version. Do you know what I mean? You, yeah. Anyone can do it and they can do it in any way they like. And I wouldn't deem to tell anyone that they need to run in a certain way or, you know, you, you could run once a week with a mate because you fancy a chat or, you know, you can go hell for leather and do races and ultras. And, you know, there's, there's so much scope and range. And I just think it's got something to offer for for, for everyone. So, Brilliant. you know, being, being able to get people started in that with Couch to 5K. Um, and the, the surprise and the shock with some people, they just don't believe they're going to be able to do it. And, you know, I, I've had I've had all the emotions at the end of, you know, we tend to do it as a 10-week programme, which is a bit arbitrary, but you've got to set it up for a certain amount of weeks. So we go for 10. Um, and, and people, you know, you, you won't get them all finishing it, but those that do, you, you've, you've had all the emotions. I've had tears and, you know, congratulations and thanks. And it's just, it's just I think it's an honour to be a part of something like that because it means so much to some people. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I totally share that with you from, from my role as, as head coach at High Runners as well. Um, I don't always get involved with that part. It depends which year it is, but, you know, I absolutely share that with you. And what what's kind of... Have, have you seen a range of kind of what's gone on after that 5k with those people that thought they couldn't run? Have they gone beyond that and gone further? Yeah, some do. I mean, the, the largest number I ever started with, I had 60 people uh, one morning wow. on that first week. And that was, you know, that blew me away. I was like, there are a lot of you here. And then, you know, the next week we had 40. Um, you know, you, you get that dropout and it's expected. Um, I think by the end of it, we had about 20 left, which I thought, you know, was pretty good. But then you do see people afterwards. Um, I was at a park run once and two ladies came up to me and they said, oh, we came to your uh, Couch to 5K course once. We, we ended up dropping out, but we jumped back in and did it with each other on our own. And, you know, now we're here doing our first park run. And, you know, that was amazing. And again, you just feel, you just feel humbled by it. You just, and you're really pleased for people as well. Cause I, I love running. I absolutely love it. I love it more than any, any sport I ever did. I played football for a bit, not very well, but you know, I did play for a long while and I wish I'd spent that time running. Um, yeah, so to, to to allow other people any kind of access to that at all, or to or to assist them in any way on their journey, is just it's great. 
Brilliant, brilliant. And um, I don't know if you caught one of my earlier episodes, but it was called Couch to Ultra Running. Um, a lady called Jan Carver took part in that interview with me. And basically her story is that she she was a couch to 5K and she ended up going to ultra. And um, have you have you seen any of that in your, in your club at all? You know, not just with the guys you've worked with, but in, in, in Royston Runners, has there been any of that kind of couch to marathon, couch to ultra sort of? Stuff. Oh, yeah, definitely going beyond the couch to 5K. You know, um, some people just use it as a springboard into park run and then that becomes their thing. And that's great because park runs amazing as well, you know. Um, but yeah, a lot of them, yeah, they, they, they keep going. They go, right, well, I'm going to try 10K and I'm going to, I'm going to do my first half marathon. And, you know, then they got onto, you know, they, they just keep going, don't they? It's, yeah, it's amazing. But, you know, you've got to start somewhere. I did. I remember the first run I did, and I think I did about three quarters of a mile. And then I was, that was it. I was done because I was used to doing sprints, you know, football running. So I couldn't do long distance. So, um, yeah, definitely, definitely seen those, um, those progressions. Yeah, good. Yeah, no, I think, um, yeah, when, when you've played those team sports, when you're, you're used to doing those sort of 10, 15 second full, full, full pelt sprints and then, you go into an endurance sport. I mean, I was this similar story to you, sort of football, and then and then running became something as a bit of an afterthought later on, later on in life, um, rather than through my sort of twenties. So I wish I, oh, I'm with you. I wish I would, I wish I could go back and and have started earlier with a running journey because what it's given me is so much. But I guess football gave us a lot as well, probably when we were younger as well. But so for anyone who's not listened to the previous episode with Liam, um, just give me a quick overview. You went on this epic 31 day journey. So just give me a quick overview of what that journey was and how it kind of originated. Um, so probably about a year ago now, um, Liam called me up, sent me a message, um, said, have you ever thought of doing Land's End to John O'Groats? And I had, cause I can remember uh, Ian Botham, the cricketer doing it uh, when I was a kid in the eighties. Um, so, yeah, I knew full well what it was. And it was one that I'd, you know, briefly thought about before. So I said, yeah, yeah, I have thought about doing it. Liam's like, do you want to give it a go? I was like, yeah, all right, let's, you know, let's do it. Um, not really knowing what it would entail, but, yeah, I was I was, I was, was keen for it. It's, it's exactly the kind of thing that I'd always thought of doing, something a bit more epic, a bit bigger, you know, just a, a journey is how I saw it. You know, instead of just doing you know, loops or anything like that. It's, you know, going from one country into another and, yeah, that really appealed. So Liam started, you know, getting the wheels turning, making inquiries. You know, we ran it by Royston Runners and, yeah, and then it, it just became more and more of a real thing. Then we started the training, you know, we, we played around with the training, um, what worked, what didn't. And, you know, before we knew it, there we were, you know, down um, down in Land's End. And then um, a month later, and very, very many miles of um, horizontal and vertical um, hiking and, and running, it, you know, it, it was done. But, yeah, it, it was an absolute epic, like not just the actual month out there, but the training as well. I mean, it completely dominated um you know, my life for that, that period of time, me and Liam, you know, we were in each other's pockets for months and months and months, you know, and it was, we, he was the person I saw more than anybody else during yeah. that time. So, yeah. yeah and I mean, I've, I've got friends and, and sort of colleagues that have been in the teaching world and, and that can be quite full on and really demanding as a, as a job. So how did that, how did that work when you were trying to do all that prep work, not just the actual physical, but the, the actual logistics, all of that prep. And then you've got this job that is very demanding as well. How, how does, how does that work? I'm quite lucky in as much as um, compared to the classroom teachers, I don't have to uh, do nearly as much of the um, take home stuff that they do, you know, all the marking and stuff like that. It's, I mean, it's absolutely insane. Um, anyone who says teachers have got an easy life, you know, nine till half three, yeah, come come and do a couple of weeks and see what that's really like. So you know, hats off to them guys. But yeah, as as the um, as the PE coach, I, I don't have to do as much prep as they do. So in, in that respect, I was quite lucky. So I you know I finished my job um, and then you know I'd be available. You know, me and Liam would often I'd, I'd get straight home from work. He'd finish up, so he was ready by four o'clock. 
and we'd be straight out the door doing you know x y or z cycling uh, walking with weight, weights vests on uh, in the gym you know all the stuff that we that we needed to do uh, and i obviously i do get the half terms and things like that so i was available for all of those and it made it a lot easier when it came to the event because i get those six weeks off in the summer so i didn't have to book anything off um yeah so yeah yeah it, it wasn't it, it wasn't i mean the training was hard but it it, it actually worked quite well with regards to the job yeah i think that's just a good example of making your personal situation work really well for this epic goal that you had and then so this epic goal that you had in a short answer if i take what i already know about this journey for, from liam's interview you you made it you you managed to do it yeah 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 we you know got through and i People have asked, you know, how did it go? And I, I've had to think about it a lot and I've kind of distilled it down to, a, you know, a quick answer, which is 80% training, 20% luck. You know, that, that's how I got round. We, we trained, we trained so hard, you know, and Liam was, you know, he really pushed that. He, he wasn't, you know, he wasn't letting us just do little bits and pieces. It was, it was really, it was really full on. Um, and, and if we hadn't done, I, I don't think I'd have got round because it just it bulletproofed us because it, it was just unbelievable, you know. See, and, now and that, that answer, you know, that yeah, answer, it, you know, that's, that's, that's uh, it, yeah. epic. You know, I think the um, the the 20% luck bit, I think anything we do in life, there's always going to be an element of that. Yeah. Well, I think everyone accepts that. Um, but actually, I love how you've put it because – you say the word bulletproof, the 80% of training was what got you through. And, you know, it sounds like that that has been something that really put you in good stead for the, the actual challenge itself. And it's something I wanted to dive into to this interview with you more on is that kind of not so much the running Liam really explained that quite well. Um, and the guys can go and listen to episode sort of uh, six on that. But in terms of that strength and conditioning preparation and that, that cross training and that, that stuff that isn't the miles, you know, just talk through that a little bit. What did you do? How did All right. So, I mean, in, in terms of a week, um, we would, I mean, I'll start with the Saturday and the Sunday uh, because that, that was like the mainstay of it. So every Saturday and Sunday we would go out and we would be doing somewhere between, somewhere around 80 miles over the two days, just every weekend, you know, religiously. Wow. Um I, I was of the mind that we would get away with doing, you know, like marathons. If we just keep doing marathon distance, marathon distance, you know, anything between that and 30 miles will be all right. Liam was like, no, we, we've got to do the big, you know, the, the big mileage. We've got to match it to what we're going to be doing when we're out there. We've got to be doing 35s, 40s, maybe even more. You know, I think we did, I think the longest we did, we did in the day was a, like a 48 and we were out there and it was just to match like it was just to match the time on feet you know it wasn't fast and it was it was so we could play around with right well what's our pace going to be and how it's there for how long it's going to take so how long when we're out there will we have left for you know eating sleeping you know all the other bits in between all the other essentials um so yeah that was saturday and sunday religiously and if we had a bank holiday we'd just go and do another one okay so, so you'd make it like a three-day triple absolutely every time every time we possibly could you know and i'm glad he put us through that because you know we we, we knew we could do those big days um because we've done them again and again and again as often as we could and i guess um, that's mental as well right oh absolutely yeah you know um boredom could set in you know just just the belief you know the thought that you know am i going to get through this like my knee really hurts am i going to be able to cope with this i remember one weekend because after a while, because we'd we'd pretty much exhausted all the trails around near home. And also Liam's like, you know, we, we live in um, North Hearts, South Cams. It's really flat around here. So Liam's like, this this isn't going to set us up for um, the kind of um, ups and downs that we're going to be doing. So we ended up going away on weekends and doing training weekends, um, you know, in, in the mountains, in the hills. And we, we did one where we were on the... Um, it's just one I particularly remember. Uh, we were on the canals and we were doing 20 miles out, 20 miles back one day and exactly the same the next day. Got to about 29 miles on the first day and my knee hurt so badly. I was like, I can't run anymore. So we had to walk the last 11 miles back in. You know, we've been out for 10, 9, 10 hours already. 
Um, wow. And I thought, well, there's no way I'm doing the training day tomorrow because that's really uncomfortable. Got up the next morning, you know, a couple of miles in, it eased off. I had a better day than I did the first one. You know, wow. 80, 80 miles over the weekend, just just done. And we we'd we'd get injuries like that, and it was crazy because you'd be you'd be almost debilitated. You'd be like, well, you know, that hip's gone. That you know, I'm I'm out of this for a, a week or two, or my foot's in such pain. You know, I'm I'm not going to be able to train this weekend. And then you get there, and you you'd be fine. It's crazy, like the body will will do it if you push it. I'm not body, saying body, so. body's clever, right? The body it is, know. yeah. Oh, it tries. I think it tries to stop you. It goes, oh, you should really stop because that hurts. You know, I, I think sometimes it's trying to con you a bit, and it's not as bad as it is. And if you just carry on going, it goes, all right, then I'll, you know, I'll, I'll get over it and carry on. So yeah, so those, those were the weekends, and then um, if we could, because you know, fitting it in with life and everything, Monday we would go for a cycle, um, okay. nice bit of cross training, low impact. Um, Tuesdays we would tend to have a run or we would do um, a gym workout focusing primarily on pure strength on the lower body so yep. big weight big weights low reps um, Wednesday we did what ended up being called weights vest Wednesday so we'd pop on a nice weights vest go and find you know a few hills that we could clamber around and just walk around for two three hours wearing five to ten kilos worth of weight um, yeah, Thursday, another workout day if we could fit it in or some kind of run, Friday rest and then repeat. And we just went like that for weeks and weeks and months and months. Brilliant, brilliant. So if I take that and we go on to the, just into the strength bit of it, um, so you've got that one really kind of heavy quality-based session. I'm assuming it was all kind of compound lifting, like deadlifts and squats and things like that. Exactly. Yeah, and then you've got that weight vest Wednesdays. Um, now, sometimes when you get caught up in social media and people's opinions, you know, even people like us that are out there on social media giving out all this advice, you know, there's a lot of conflicting views out there. But actually, from where I'm looking at it, if I was going to coach someone, I would do it very similar in, in the sense of I'd make them have really one good quality compound lifting session per week, like yeah. just one. And oh, then yeah. that weights vest Wednesday sounds like it really – like complemented it because it had that specific side to it, but it also, you know, because you've added the weight on, it made it harder than it than it would be normally, um, and probably was hard, heavier than your packs that you carried on the day, right? Exactly, you've got it. That that was what we were trying to mimic. So we knew that what we were carrying, especially with the support team helping us, you know, um, if we needed a thing, we could go and get it on the next stop, or we could drop saying cough if we didn't need it. You know, if it, if the weather didn't turn out to be too bad, will you ditch the uh, rainproof coat? But yeah, that was exactly the thinking behind it. Um, we walk around with five kilos on for two or three hours a week. We know we can carry the actual stuff that we, we've got to have with us. Um, and we were already doing, you know, time on feet. We'd always take the vests with us on the on the weekends. Um, so yeah, it, it, we'd already got the time on feet down. So it was, can you do it with a little bit of extra stress? So when you yeah. go to do it, you, you can, you know, you won't be wearing the weights vest and you'll feel all the better for it. Um, and yeah, the, I, I think for any kind of runner, whether it be, you know, 5K or ultras, yeah, compound leg exercises, focusing on pure strength, because you're already doing, you're already doing your enduro work when you're going and doing your running. So what, yeah, what you need is to give those legs strength. I mean, all, all the articles that I read, you know, they're all turning towards that. All the coaches are saying it, you know, you, you, you've, you've hit the nail on the head. So you obviously you, you're, you're sold, you know, you're convinced. Yeah, no, I mean, I think I'm, I might be a little bit too far down the road already in terms of, you know, I might have to rein it in a bit because all I talk about at my running club is strength and conditioning for running. Um, and the importance of doing that and you know the guys that are brought into it and are doing a bit whether that's here in my gym or just in their own time they they appear to be more injury free they appear to be able to withstand more stress on the body than others and this is all anecdotal at the moment but you know yeah. i think strength and conditioning for running is something that hasn't it's probably not been around that long really in the grand scheme of the sport no no like, i know what you're saying you know, it's not something that I would imagine maybe the elites have been doing it for a long time, but 
yeah. us recreational guys that decide to take on epic challenges like like you guys did you know you obviously decided that structure was really important I think, you know, your, your amateurs are trying more and more to emulate, um, you know, what the uh, pros are doing. And we're putting ourselves through tougher and tougher things. So if we're not doing, you know, a little bit of what they're doing, we do risk those injuries. And, you know, people talk about runners getting injured all, all the time. But I think, I mean, I've seen it with the Couch to 5K guys. You know, it's really exciting when you do your first 5k your first part run and you're like oh I really like this you know and then you want to do more and you end up going you know you jump you jump straight in and so many people get injured because they're not doing the right prep they're not doing they're not doing the stretching the foam rolling all of those kinds of things um but they are doing the miles and they are doing the races um so yeah I, it's a tough one because you know your elites this is what they do so they've got all that time during the day haven't they you know they, they get up and they get the time to rest afterwards we've got to go to work and things like that and it's like what and then go down the gym and then do the stretching and then do the running and yeah. it is it is time consuming so i get it people just want the enjoyable bit and the enjoyable bit is the running yeah. um well i mean saying that I, I quite like a bit of a gym session but it's not for everyone but yeah i can understand why people don't do it it's like oh did you foam roll after you ran they're like no i went home and had to put the kids to bed and have dinner do you know what i mean yeah but yeah, yeah I, th I think if you can fit it in and i don't think it has to be monster either i don't think it has to be you know a whole hour or something like that i mean when me and liam were really stuck for time it was like right okay well let's just get some squats done let's yeah. just get the barbell on the shoulders and get some heavy squats done right half hour done out you know. yeah in out yeah no absolutely i think i think we overcomplicate it and think things have to be structured for for like a 45 minute minimum or an hour but actually if you can do 20 30 minutes of of snc for running you know do your squats your lunges your deadlifts you know those kinds of things you're going to be i think you're going to be winning and sounds like you guys got that spot on especially with your 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 very concise answer for what is a huge challenge for you to put it the way you did earlier in the episode just now is is brilliant because you're saying that 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 whole structure of which there was elements that were strength and conditioning based within it was 80 percent of the reason that got you through it without a doubt there's no doubt yeah absolutely again you you know nail on the head it's, it's just I, I think if we'd if we'd skimped on any of the elements i think we would have been you know less likely to to do what we did um, i mean and even then it was tough I mean, I, you kind of said it earlier that it it prepped us to be able to start. It, it, I wasn't I wasn't fit enough to do that whole thing when I when I stepped up to the start line, so to speak. It made us fit enough to even think about having a go at it because you know half of half of the fitness was gained you know during during the uh, during the challenge. Yeah, I mean exactly. If I if I wrap my brains back now to sort of when we were doing straight power and endurance back in my uni days. And we were looking at elite athletes and they're talking about short term gains sort of being over 14 days. You know, there's a slight gain in, in kind of your blood flow and your, your capillary density and efficiency and things like that. Well, actually, halfway through this challenge, that fitness was getting you through the second half. Right. Yeah, exactly. You know, um, we, we both Liam and I had some. Um, some really dodgy early on injuries and we tapered a bit. So we thought we were going to be super fit, um, yeah. super rested, ready to go. And then actually I picked up a knee and a groin injury after about day three or four. And I thought, hang on, I've, I've done three days in a row before. What's, what's going on here? I've had a little taper. I'm the fittest I'm going to be. Um, and I really worried, you know, I was really worried that it was going to, it was going to take me out of it. Um, and that, that, that's a question I've got for you actually, is that, there would have been things that were unforeseen or unexpected that yeah. that you just thought you'd planned for, but actually you hadn't, or you didn't realize it would happen. And obviously that's, that's going to be one of them then, but was there anything else like that that sort of occurred? Yeah. My, um, my shin, my right shin swelled up to about twice its size after, wow. um, after about a third, maybe a little more of the journey. And I couldn't, um, I couldn't change the angle of flexion um whilst moving otherwise it was excruciating so i had to hold my foot kind of in a stuck um stuck range like that so i was kind of hitting the ground and i had to keep it so i was not quite waddling but it was it was a rather unorthodox gait let's say 
because wow. I, I couldn't I couldn't go down I couldn't go up I just had to hold it in that middle because otherwise it was just pain right up the front of my shin and um, you had to do that for what a 12 hour day uh yeah over over about seven days oh, yeah wow. it, it didn't heal up for a little while and and I was thinking well one you know is this going to put me out you know how long am I going to be able to cope with this is it just going to get worse or is it going to settle um Two, if I do get by, or even if I don't, am I doing myself future damage? Yeah, because you think you know, if you've got an, if you've got something like that whilst you were running normally, you take a couple of weeks off and you let it sort yourself out. Um, yeah, but this occurred after Liam um, had had to pull out, um, and you know there were there were just so many reasons why I felt I had to carry on, even though it wasn't perhaps the most sensible thing. You know, one, I just I wanted to complete the thing. Two, one of us, it felt like one of us had to finish after all we put into it. Um, people were people were watching us, you know, people were relying on us, people had sponsored us. Um, but mostly mostly for Liam. Because yeah. you know, if ever it got tough, if ever it was painful or boring or the weather was unpleasant and I went through it all, I could always think, yeah, well, where would you rather be? You know, would you rather be in his situation or would you rather be in your situation? So yeah, one, one of us had to get through, but yeah, you can, you can't, you, for something like that, you can't prep for all of it. No, um, no, you know, that, that unforeseen part of Liam um, having to, yeah. to drop and what was it 11 days? Did he make yeah. it? He did 11 full was, days, yeah? It was close as well. You know, we were 10 miles away from finishing that day and we had a rest day the next day. Um, we sat down on a bench and, you know, he had tried his best to get through that day. He'd got his poles and he was virtually using them like crutches. I, yeah. I swear if you'd given him a pair of crutches, he'd have finished the day because he'd, he'd have just done it like that. He just um, carried on. But, yeah, but he was putting himself through it. He was not in a good way. Um and we were 10 miles out, which you know, seems like, oh, we'll finish it up then. You know what I mean? But it wasn't like that at all. I mean, he was really suffering. And we had to have a really honest, frank discussion. I was like, well, am I going to finish up here, mate? Or am I going to stop with you? And we're going to add that 10 miles on once you're recovered, you know? And, you know, it, 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 that was a tough one. That was a tough conversation to have. Because and what, what did happen in that scenario then? He he told me to go and finish the 10 and get it yeah. done and finish that day. Um, he just, he had to stop, you know, he was at like level 10 kind of pain up his, yeah. um, up his shin. Um, yeah. So he said, no, you, you go and get it finished and I'll have the day off and, you know, see if I can come back. Now, I don't know what was going through his mind at that point. I don't know whether he was thinking I'll be all right if I have a day off or whether he was thinking I'm done here. So, you know, it's a tough one because I had to be frank with him and say, what am I doing, mate? I need to know. Um, but also, I, you know, I was completely empathising for him because I knew I could see he was struggling. Yeah. Yeah. But I guess in that same moment, your your why, as soon as you realised he wasn't going to continue, your why became a lot easier. Yeah, I just had to carry on. And, and the thing is, we had had the discussion before, you know, we'd said, what, what do we do if one of us can't carry on? And we've yeah. said the other one carries on. And, you know, he asked me the question and I, I think anyway, and, and I said, yeah, yeah, the other one carries on. He was like, I'm glad you said that because, you know, that's that would be my way of thinking about it. And the other one just goes and gets it done for the other one. And whichever, you know, of the pair couldn't carry on would jump back in if and when they could. And Liam did if and when he could, you know, he would join me for parts of it later on. It wasn't what he wanted. You know, he wanted to be there for the whole thing. As soon as he knew he wasn't going to be able to do every mile of it, I think it lost a little bit of something for him, for sure. Yeah, yeah. And I think, you know, having done a few ultras of my own that have just been in one single day, I had I had a DNF once and, you know, I tried to explain that to people and they didn't really understand. So I think for us to try and understand exactly what Liam thought would be would be wrong because no one's going to actually understand what he thought and all that effort that went into it and the prep yeah. and everything else, you know, only, only he really is ever going to know. And, and perhaps only he should know, you know, he can pay it forward as and when he needs to throughout his running life. I'm sure he will. Um, you know, I certainly learned a few things from what he had to say in the last interview as well, but I think, you know, it'd be wrong for us to try and speculate and understand what it was. But like you say, you know, who knows what the, the guy must have been going through and it must have been, must have made it really tough. Yeah. And I mean, he, he, you know, 
he he doesn't think he dealt with it particularly well necessarily, but I do. He stuck around, and I said to him if he wanted to go home, you know, I'd be totally cool with that um, because I could understand that it had kind of lost its momentum, its purpose for him, and I think he needed maybe a little bit of time to recover. But he didn't. He stuck it out, and he was there for me, you know, the entire time. And I, I mean, I'd like to say Liam did the lion's share of the prep, but that would imply that I did some of it and not so much. You know, right. when it when it came to, you know, the planning the course and, you know, all, all of that kind of stuff, the essentials, getting the support team ready, he just he just took it on and he did it. There's no way I would have completed it without his his preparation. You know, it, it was yeah, it was it was military style. It was just full on. Um yeah. So, I've, you know, I, yeah. I own so much in terms of in terms of my finishing it. Yeah, and I think I think him staying behind, just from my perspective from the outside, that for me is kind of what the running community, that sums up the running community for me. The fact that he did stay. Especially ultras, I think. Yeah, yeah. I I, I think there's a different level to that. I think um, like Royston Runners are great for support and things like that. It's a really, really community-based club. I love my running club. I don't know if other clubs are like that. I've heard, you know, different stories, but... you know, for me, it's it's a really, really great community. Uh, my local park runs exactly the same. But I think the ultra community are a lot like that. I think because it's so niche, because it's yeah. so weird and, you know, you're going to run how many miles? 50 miles, you know, yeah. stuff like that. People yeah. don't always, they don't always get it. Sometimes other runners don't even get it. So no. I think I think the ultra running world is 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 quite unique. So if you're in it, you're in it and you are so you're so on everyone's side, you know? Yeah. And I think I said to Liam on his interview, I think I said that the challenge wasn't actually just running that distance. The challenge was the logistics of where you'd end up and sleep. And he made it yeah. clear that you guys didn't want to do that in a tent. So you were always going to get to a certain certain point where you could stay in a bed and maybe get a shower and a bath or whatever overnight. So, yeah. you know, the logistics of that in itself, that's a challenge, right? Oh, I mean, you know, it's the kind of thing that, you know, people get paid for. You've got these businesses who who take people and say, all right, well, you, you get to here and then we'll drive you to the next spot and we'll make sure you've got your food um, and all that kind of stuff. I mean, Liam could do that stuff hands down. You know, he's such an organised, driven guy. Um, yeah, so he, he really did set it up for the win. And all I had to do was just get through those days. And there was going to be somewhere to stay. There was going to be food available. Um, you know, once I've been out for two, three hours, there was going to be someone with a sandwich. Um, yeah, and, and it, you know, it ended up being him. And it wasn't what he wanted to do. He didn't want to be part of the support crew, but he, you know, he did it. Um, yeah. Yeah, much credit right. to the guy. I think it's awesome. I think, I think the whole story from, from sort of concept of doing it to completing it, you know, in the photo of you guys there at the end at the side, and, you know, that that the whole concept is is a challenge and what a challenge. And you didn't even just do it the most direct route either. You did it, you did it in a certain way, um, taking in certain certain trails and and like the Pennine Way, for example, and things like that. And that's for me, from an outside point of view, loving the ultra running community, wanting to be bigger and part of that as mm. as we go through my career. I think I'm watching you guys and I'm just getting inspired by the whole thing, not just the running, the whole thing, the logistics, the people, the, you know, the, he said there was a lady that, that got involved quite a lot in terms of doing some of the bookings of the hotels or whatever you stayed in, you know, there was big help all the way through it. And from the outside, I've had some feedback from Liam's interview as well from listeners and, you know, people are absolutely amazed by what you guys have achieved. And, it's, no one can ever take that away from you, can they? They can never See, take that away. That's a really interesting one for me that you say about how people felt looking from the outside in because I really struggle with that because we would get the people come and join us um, and they'd, they'd run with us for a bit and they'd be thanking us. They'd be going, oh, thanks for letting me join you. You know, they, even, even the people who weren't running, the ones who were making our sandwiches and things like that, they were, thanks for letting, you know, be a part. And I'm like, no, no, we're, we're thanking you. You just made me a sandwich because I'm starving because I've been running for, you know, three hours. And, and I couldn't get it. I couldn't wrap my head around how, how much people seem to appreciate being allowed to be a part of it. But then I kind of tried to 
flip it round. And it, if it was me and it was some friends from the running club and I was watching them, I think, you know, it took me a while to be able to admit this, but yeah, I'd have been in awe of them. I'd have been so on their side and, you know, wanted them to do it and gone, oh my word, they've done another day. But I think, you know, whilst I was in it, you, you can't get cocky. You can't, you've got to have that humility because if you get cocky, you, you won't get through your days. Yeah. So yeah, when when it's when when people say no, it's an inspiration and things like that, I was I really did struggle with that initially, you know. Yeah, no, it'd be it'd be great to get you guys to come over to Histon as you're so close to uh to just have a chat at one of our one of our training evenings where we do sort of a slideshow and whatever. And I, I can always just sit and ask you guys a few questions at the front um and maybe take some questions from the floor as well, because that'd be really good. Um so here we are. We're in. A, we're in the school holidays. It's August, probably the for for UK climate, probably the hotter days of the year. Um, and then there's things like cows. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't know how much you. I did watch the previous one with Liam, but I don't know how much you went into the stuff about the cows. Basically, Liam hates cows. He's he's really frightened of them, and that just became kind of comedy. Uh, for me but um, yeah not so much for him but we had so many run-ins so many run-ins with 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 cows um, yeah and and again he did really well because initially he was really really wasn't coping with any encounters with cows it was like no let's just go a different route but yeah he he, he really he really started to cope with it towards the end. We walked through this field of cows and, you know, they were, you know, getting a bit excited and frisky and jumping around and mooing and following us. And, you know, credit to him, he, he walked through this whole field and I'm, I'm just chuckling because, um, yeah, I, I found it quite amusing. They, they don't worry me as much, but yeah, the, the whole cow thing was, was hilarious. Cowageddon is, right. is, is, is how I coined it. So yeah, that, that whole thing was pretty funny. But there were loads of things, you know, there was loads of stuff like that. And, you know, we did all the training together and I, I missed things like that, the comedy um, and the camaraderie and things like that. You know, I really did miss, you know, having him there um, after the point at which he had to drop out because there were some tough days. And, yes. you know, just to have had someone who'd been through it all with me, you know, it, it was so wet up the uh, spine of England. Um, yeah. The weather was awful. Um, and, you know, all the paths had turned into rivers, you know, well, rivers, a bit of a, an exaggeration, but they were, you know, you sometimes you couldn't tell what was meant to be the path because it was just running with water. Yeah. Um, you know, it was cold, it was wet, it was a bit rubbish and it would just be nice to have someone to have a, have a moan, have a moan uh, with about it. So, <laughs> Yeah, it, it was pretty tough. It was certainly more fun, you know, when I had uh when I had Liam with me. So Yeah. No, cool. So um would would you do it again? I've thought about what what would I do? Because people do ask, like, oh, you know, what's next? What's next? You've done that. Um it's a pretty big endeavour. You know, it, it takes up a lot of your time. It really does. Um you know, like you know, like we've discussed with the training, if nothing else. Now, part of the reason I do my job is because I like having those periods of time off when I can go on a bit of an adventure. But this was this was quite an epic. I don't think I'd do Lands End to John O'Groats again. Um, uh, yeah, I think if Liam chose to, because I think you know th th there might be a bit of unfinished business there. I think I'd go and support him, yeah. or do do parts of it with him. You know. Um, but for me, it's it, it's done. I got I was lucky enough to complete it, so I I don't feel there's any unfinished business. I don't feel the need to do that. If I was going to do something like that, uh, something similar, it'd, be, it'd have to be somewhere or something different because there's so much out there. You know, would I go to another country, do something like that? Um, yeah, run across America. Yeah, that that was mentioned. Yeah, that was that was mentioned partially in jest. You know, and Liam, yeah, because Liam would be like, well. Can we just get this done first, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I also I also think it's nice just to go away for like a weekend or something like that. I think you can – we had a really, really good um, kind of Royston Runners weekend away. Um, must have been between 10 and 20 of us. And we went, um, went to the lakes or the peaks and we just had two, three days bank holiday. Did a fell run, first one I'd ever done. 
Um, and, and that was great. And all the people who went still talk about it and how fantastic it was and how much they enjoyed it. So um, I think for now, that's the kind of thing I'm going to be aiming for. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I do like the odd epic, but I think you can do I think you can do a weekend or I think something like what, you know, that which uh, Liam and I did. That's a bit of a that's a bit of a special one. Not to say I never would again, but yeah, certainly not that particular one. Yeah, yeah. No, fair enough. That's uh, that's that. That sounds it sounds exciting. And if there is anything in the future, and you think you think there's anything we want to get involved with as a, a club that are quite local to your club as well, we're we're always open to ideas, and it's always good to see what others are doing as well. So, um, yeah, we'll we'll keep an eye out for you guys coming up with some new challenges. So, if I asked you the really broad question, what does running give you, and what does running mean to you? So like you, I started doing it um, for football fitness. I thought, right, yeah. footy fitness isn't good enough, you know. Um, and I started running. And after I'd got over those, you know, initial getting used to the endurance aspect of it and got a few miles in my legs, I realised, one, I, I probably liked it more than football. I liked the events more, you know. Um, yeah, you don't get someone trying to sort of side your legs off, <laughs> that kind of thing. So it was, it was just, it was a bit more friendly. Um, yeah, I, I like the community, I think, a bit more. Um, I like that you could be competitive without having to sort of necessarily go up against anyone else, you know, close and physical. Um, and, and I was, yeah, I, I was certainly better at running. I still am better at running um, than I ever was at football. And yeah, it, there's just so much to it. You know, like the inclusivity, which I mentioned, that anyone can do it. So you can meet anybody, you know, age, gender, all of that stuff. It, it just doesn't matter. People can, can do their own thing. I love that about it. Um, I love the various kinds of running. I love that you can do it competitively or you can just go out for, you know, a bit of a jog. Um you know, you've got road, you've got trail, you've got all the different distances. Um, yeah, I, ju I just think it's got so much to offer, and yeah, it's great for it's great for health, physical and mental. You know, yeah. you, you you get out in the countryside and you get to enjoy that. I mean, the amount of you know wildlife that I got to see, um, and and the landscapes and everything whilst I was out there doing the jog was just unbelievable. I've, I've never, you know, never spent that amount of time outside um, since I was a kid. If even then, you know, I, I, we were just outside all the time. We watched all the seasons change. You know, we started off in the in the cold autumn, winter weather. We watched it turn into spring, into summer. You know, you, we saw all those changes. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm a bit of a romantic when it comes to sort of running and I, I like to link it back to you know, how we would have been far more sort of linked to nature, you know, thousands of years ago. And I, I think we miss that. I think working in offices and all of that stuff really, it really messes with us. We're, we're not meant to do that. You know, we're meant to be out there. We're meant to be foraging and running around and all of those things. And I think maybe, just maybe running is is the closest we're going to get to that. Yeah. You know, we, we, in, in modern life. Do you know what I, I hear I hear everything you're saying and I completely agree. I think that's that's a great way of putting it. Um the way I would put it if I was discussing it with someone would be that when it comes to running, what I get out of running, the reason I'm in a given situation is because I'm a runner, but what I'm getting out of it has very little to do with running, which is kind of what you've just said as well, I think. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there's you all know. this other stuff. It's it's just lovely being out there. You know, it, it, it really is. I mean, I know some people aren't that much of a fan of going out. You know, the, you have got the people who class themselves as fair weather runners. Yeah. Um, you know, they'll only go out if it's nice weather and that. But, you know, that's fine too. But I think those that are willing to go out in the cold and the rain and, uh, you know, experience all all of the mud and everything. Um, yeah, I, I think you'll get a lot out of that. Even if you don't really realise it. I think sometimes it just kind of, so, kind of seeps in passively. Yeah, you know, you 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 you're not really you're not stopping necessarily and looking at all the butterflies and the leaves and everything, but just being in it just calms the brain. 
yeah, and the amount of places that you must have passed through on 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 the challenge would have been. Oh, yeah. you'd have probably never gone to most of those villages and towns. It's, and yeah, it's it's absolutely true. You know, you'd have you'd have aimed perhaps to gone to some of them. You know, the peaks and the lakes are very popular. People end up running there a lot. But you know, I'll never see that much of Scotland again. Um, yeah. And it, you know, it was an absolute joy. And you know, there was some proper jaw dropping moments. You know, kinds of mountains and scenery that. You know, even when the weather was rubbish and, you know, it was, you know, I was absolutely soaked to the bone um, and it was all green and grey. It was still, it's still, it was still beautiful. It was still amazing. Yeah, no, awesome. So if you were going to give sort of three tips to someone doing any sort of multi-day ultra running, what, what would be, what would be the three tips or the three things that would stand out to you to kind of take on board and for people to think about? Prep, prep, prep. Prep, prep, prep. Like yeah, it. just you know, you've you've just got to look at every every aspect of what you know what might go wrong. I mean, I'm not saying you know carry everything, including the kitchen sink, because that's going to be a mistake. But you know, talk to people, find out what other people do, go and try it out for yourself. You know, if we hadn't done the prep we'd done, I wouldn't have got round. It just yeah. we hadn't if we hadn't done the training, or if if Liam's you know meticulous planning of the route. And the support team hadn't been in place, you know. There's no doubt in my mind. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have. Wouldn't have got round. So you just. You've got to go and live it for yourself. You've got to go and train. You've got to go and prep. You've got to try it out. It's like when um, people ask about doing a marathon. If I'm coaching someone to do a marathon, you can do all the training you like, and then if you decide, oh, I'm going to wear those brand new pair of uh, compression shorts I bought on the day that you've never worn before, the whole thing can just go. You know up in the air so you've just you've just got to think about everything you've got to think about your training your kit your nutrition just everything you could possibly do because you get away with it in a 10k you'll get away with it in a you know city half marathon something like that but as you start progressing up those distances it, it compounds the the potential problems so any little thing um can just you know yeah yeah, send send you. Yeah, you know, I mean, if you're going to go out and do an ultra, and, and you you've never you've never tried an eating plan before, or you know, you're eating things that you've not eaten before, and all of a sudden your stomach's gone, well, you're not going to finish. It's that kind of thing. So yeah, yeah prep. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, so one last question then, um, just a bit more broader about your running journey. I can see, you know, if anyone's watching this on YouTube, they'll be able to see it. You got the Boston Boston Marathon top on, is it? Yes, my, so, only, ever, my only ever sub three. You only ever sub three. But my only ever sub three. Yeah, you got there. So I'm assuming I you did, yeah. did. You get a good for age to get into that. I did. Yeah, I got a good for age. Tried to use it for London, but then the pandemic hit, and uh, yeah, so unfortunately they were only taking good for age um, that people had got between a certain period of time. I think it was sort of first six months of 2019 i got mine in 2018 so i, I didn't get to go to london on the, off the back of that but i think i might have another go at boston um next year and see if i can uh, see if i can achieve it yeah but when it comes that. to when it comes to those majors those six world majors you've done the one that everyone struggles to do because oh, no i see now this 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 is the uk version as the uk oh, it boston. is yeah Sorry. so i get i get that a lot actually like, oh you've done boston I'm like no it's the uk one so, so I, have to, U- I have to be UK, honest. Yeah. UK, Boston, Boston UK. But it is great. It is fantastic. Yeah, it might Very not flat, have, uh, It's a lot cheaper, I'll tell you that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Liam was running through all of the uh, different costs for all of the ones he's doing to try and get his um, six majors badge. And some yeah. of them are ridiculous. I mean, I think London's probably the most iconic. And actually, it's the cheapest out of them. So respect to London for that. But, yeah, yeah. if you want if you want a very doable... Um, flat marathon if you're going for a time this this is an absolute cracker really boston nice UK. people yeah boston uk lovely people lovely support nice flat course out in the fence yeah no someone else uh i think it was sarah in episode two from redway runners over in milton Keynes. she was she was talking about that marathon and they you know she was going there with a few people from the club to to go for a pb on that course because it's that yeah. kind of course so, it's quite quiet, but like you say, it is that kind of course. So it's you know, if you want to go and enjoy, a, you know, like a big marathon, you know, I can understand why people would want to go to London or or somewhere like that. I, I get it; it's a bit of an event, especially if it's going to be your only one. Because some people do just do that marathon and then go, you know, tick the box. I'm happy with that; that's fine. Um, but yeah, if you're going for that time, 
it, it's, it's an absolute beaut. Yeah. So any bucket list race that you can think of? Any ultra marathons you'd like uh, to do? Well, I, uh, I've got unfinished business with Beachy Head. So off I went the other week to uh, see if I could get my uh, my sub four on Beachy Head. And then I got really, really ill overnight. And uh, let's just say I had to stay in bed. So, yeah, that one's going to have to wait until next year. Sub, sub four at Beachy, that's the next one. I'm just enjoying cross country with the Royston Runners at the moment. I've, I've had to realise that I'm not quite fully recovered from the jog yet it's still in the bones and I, I need to have a bit of a um a few weeks of just chilled running because I tried to, I tried to jump straight back in and you know it, it was unsurprisingly you know it, it wasn't happening so yeah I'm, I'm on a bit of a bit of a recovery journey at the moment just doing just enjoying cross country and trying to trying to keep the races to a, a bit of a minimum just get back to being able to go and jog out there and, you know, just appreciate that I'm lucky enough to be able to go out and have a run. Yeah, no, awesome. Well, um, thanks very much for coming on the show, Grant. That was Thank absolutely you, epic to hear your side of it as well. And, um, you know, I, hopefully sharing this out to to not just my club and your club, but actually the other listeners that we're, we're starting to pick up and accrue now around, around the world, you know, looking at the analytics here, we've got a few listeners over in the States now, who have contacted me and said, you know, thanks for, for putting this on. You know, hopefully this will will inspire them as well in the way that it's inspired me and inspired um, some of the guys at our running club. And I'm sure it's been the same at Royston as well for you guys. So thanks very much, mate. I really appreciate appreciate you coming on. Um, yeah, no, thank you. And thanks for your time and, and, and for what you're doing as well. You know, credit to you. Yeah, no, cheers, mate. Thanks very much. So if you did enjoy it, guys, and you're listening out there and you think there's someone that would really benefit from hearing about the, um, Grant and Liam's story, the, the episode six and episode seven are both available for you to listen to and watch on YouTube as well. So please share them out to anyone that you think might find it quite interesting. But I hope you enjoyed yourselves and I look forward to meeting you here again to discuss more on the Ultra Running Podcast with me, Coach Marshy. <laughs>